Good morning, guys. It's the last day of Vlogmas. I don't know if Tyler started this yet or not. My hair is wet from a shower last night, so I'm feeling good. <laughs> We're gonna tackle that right now. That has been driving me crazy. So our pantry does have organization. I feel like it was, was it even during Vlogmas or maybe it was another vlog like on my channel where I, I just kind of pulled everything out or at least some of the things and just reorganized it. I just need to do it again. It'll take me, I know, like 20 minutes, but it will make a world of difference in like how I feel when I open the pantry, you know what I mean? And I feel like just every time after a couple grocery shopping sessions where we don't properly put things away, that's what happens. So let me show you up close. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just, it's the like range of things that we have here. We've got Ritz bits, what you want. We got teethers, Pedialyte, bone broth, cashews. We've got Christmas cookies that I think we are, they're almost gone. We have this, we got in a white elephant with some other stuff. Like, it's just so funny. And see, this is it. I have, we have too many. I can combine some of those. So anyway, we're going to tackle at least really from here down. Because from here up, like this is all, um, like that's extra stuff up there I can't even reach. This is all like baking stuff, etc. This is like breakfast. And that's pretty much, I mean, that's as good as it gets. This is all breakfast stuff, cereals, rice. So I feel like those two ones are good. It's just from here down. We're going to... Let's, let's hit it. Right off the bat, this had two Z-bars in it, so I took those out. This had two little packs of these. In it. Like, those can be recycled. These can be put in our little snack things. I'll show you in a sec, but that instantly, I mean, look at all that room that was taking up for no reason, very little payoff. All right, so I just took our little can organizer out, cleaned out under there. I need to clean this off too. So, went through our cans. I'm gonna kind of have them a little better organized, like, like spaghetti type stuff in one, soup in one row, beans in another, that kind of thing. So I took out all these drawers and cleaned them out and then just reorganized with what we had in there. It is so nice. I even dumped, I had a big thing of like small cheese and stuff in there. You want a snack? Hmm. So I eventually need to do new labels, but one thing we do, like when we've used up an entire thing or most of the way through, we'll dump out the crumbs and actually clean it. So I just cleaned the pita chip one, so now we're gonna put a fresh bag in. That way I feel like these could tend to get really gross, especially with kids and stuff. And so it's nice to like start fresh each time. Oh, so satisfying. All right, we are done. So like I said, I did mess with those two, but starting here down, so much better. And now there's like a method to the chaos. So got the cans. This used to be stretched all the way out, but I pushed it in so that we could put the baby stuff there. Cause that's new, you know, having little things like this and like her rice cereal, we sometimes give her or oatmeal cereal, whatever. Having a spot for the bananas. Cause those have been floating around for a while. I took out all the drawers of these and cleaned them out. Redid Mommy. what's in them. Yeah, honey. So then we've got like formula there. And then down here, we just got pasta stuff, some like gravy mixes, nuts. I keep asking Tyler because I don't really, I like nuts, but I don't like snack on them. I was like, Tyler, are these nuts old? He's like, no, those are good nuts. I still eat them. I'm like, okay. Our random like, you know, cooking type things and then cracker like things. And then down here is more organized smoothie things. This, this is like our random baking things. Here, we're gonna keep, we never really have a home for broth. So we'll keep any broth we have here. And then this is just an extra bag for up there when we run out. So I'm feeling so much better and everything's been cleaned off too. And oh, I feel like I can breathe. Alrighty, I don't wanna do it, but I need to do it. All right, here we go. I am going to try and clean out the workout room. Bum, bum, bum. So naturally when we had the basement under construction, which it still is a little bit, but it's almost done. Um, we, uh, this just became, a, it just became a catch all for everything that we didn't have a spot for. I just kind of threw it in here. Also for my birthday, which is in June, Jessica bought me this awesome weight set, this dumbbell set. It took like four months to get here. So by the time we actually got it, the basement was fully under construction. So I just took them out of the boxes and I just kind of threw them down here. But in that box there, uh, it has a rack for them. So um, I'm gonna get these few things out. Honestly, like my saw here, I need to take that out and a few other things. It's not terrible. I mean, it's definitely bad. Okay, it's pretty terrible. Anyway, I'm gonna take everything out, try to get that built and then get that along the wall over there. But just having that done, I think is gonna be a huge help. And then I'll just have a few other things. We know we already have like all of our board games and stuff. We have a ton more back in that closet back there. We know that they're all gonna go in that thing over there. I just don't have it. Uh, we don't have the doors on it yet and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna wait until he gets the doors on it before I put all that there. But we have a spot for some stuff that's just not gonna get out of that closet for 
So for now, I'm going to stuff some more stuff back there just for a little while longer. Then when it's finally done, but at least, okay, so my whole point is that I'm going to try and get the actual workout room here in workout condition. Also, if anybody's done this before, I want to get that like a uh, rubber, it's not rubber, it's like a foam floor for in here. It's obviously not a huge priority, but we had them in the new carpet here. This is the old like Berber carpet. And I'm wondering, and I haven't done any research yet. This is probably just a quick Google search away. But while I've got you here, question, has anybody done this? And if so, did they lay it like the, the squares over the existing carpet? Or should I take this carpet out and put the squares directly on the uh, concrete floor underneath? Again, I could just do some research, but if you guys have done it before, if you have any uh, opinions on the matter, please let me know, because I'll be curious. Uh, okay, ready? Butts on three. One, two, three, butts. Almost everything out of here. I got our old weights there, which I don't know what Jessica wants to do with those. I don't know if she's gonna want to, because the kettlebells I think she'll keep, and then we have like the, the long bar there with the, the few random free weights there. So uh, I don't know what we're gonna do with those yet, but I think that is where the new rack is gonna go, which I am working on right now, getting that all set up. I hope, I hope it fits here. I might have to move that mirror. We'll see. That was just a cheapo mirror that I got at like, uh, I think it was like 10 bucks at Meyer. Um, I wouldn't mind getting one that's a little bit bigger for that area and maybe moving it up. I don't know. We'll fall flats with that. But uh, maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Again, it's not a very big room. So we really kind of don't have a lot to work with here. But I got everything cleared out. So at least it's a little bit better than when I started. I am gonna get so buff, you guys won't even recognize me. <laughs> Look out, Ryan Reynolds, here comes Tyler Braun. I don't know, maybe somebody buffer, I don't know. The Rock? You think I could look like The Rock? Like what? It's like, I, six weeks, probably? We've already got the personality of The Rock, so. I do? Oh, I'm not near as motivational as The Rock. What's interesting is this came with like the this three levels here, but all the weights fit on the bottom. So I'm assuming, this only goes up to 50. I'm assuming they probably have 60 plus, but 50, I'm sure will be. More than enough for my purposes. So we have these like three, five, eights here on the top uh, that we already had that Jessica used sometimes. Uh, but I have, I always had these things and I was constantly having to take this off and switch out the weights and stuff like that whenever I used them. So this is going to be amazing. I genuinely have no excuses to not be just, just super ripped. So I think come next Vlogmas, I'll just be the most ripped person you guys have ever seen. And just so everybody knows, I do have a lock on this door with a key and we always, 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 always keep it locked. And the treadmill, we have the key out of it at all times and we always hide this key as well. So a project I did, I think when Jessica was pregnant because oh, I didn't Tyler. know what I was to like, do with you myself. know when you did it. It was actually shortly after, oh no, that was the Playbill project. That, yeah. You're like post nesting phase, but this was a nesting I think, thing yeah. you did. But we had, okay, so we had literally shelves and shelves and shelves of DVDs. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, obviously so much of everything is streaming. And so I was like, well, I don't really want to get rid of the DVDs. A, no one's going to buy them. You can't even like, yeah, even, who, even who, at the library, yeah. they're like 50 cents a piece. Yeah. So I was like, well, we have them. And then if we, our internet goes out, we'll have, you know, whatever. So I got How all awesome of our DVDs and I put them all in alphabetical order and I scanned them in, in my uh, phone. So I have like a catalog of everything that we have. Wow. Um, but then we have all of our DVDs. So I just, I got rid of the cases. I recycled those, but we have all the DVDs that we have. So... It really, Tyler, this is And so is now they so take genius. up that much space. And we have them for when inevitably the internet goes out and we're like, we well, need to watch something. We need to. And we talked about like if we go camping and stuff like that, like in my parents' RV, like there's a DVD player in that, but there wouldn't be any, any internet. So if we wanted to have it like in the evenings to have it, you know, but that's just obviously a lot easier to carry around. And it now doesn't take up literally every single it inch. It would have taken up like all. Every single inch of this would have been taken up by. Well, yeah, you, you, we did have a lot when we it was, combined. Yeah. And we were part of the Disney Movie Club, so we had all those. So I'm glad to still... We kept those cases, though, didn't we? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. When I say that this is the greatest thing we ever added to this house this year, 
It is so simple. And Tyler's like, I'm glad it brings you so much joy. You just put it on the door and I think there's another way you can hang it too, like a suction, whatever. Anyway, and when you're ready, these are all of our like dirty kitchen towels, like things that, you know, our drying mat, towels we use to wipe Pinocchio's feet when it's rainy. I am totally out of breath. <laughs> I'm just so excited. <laughs> We just throw it all in here and at the end of the week or whenever we're doing laundry, this is usually the last load I do. I grab this, you can unzip the bottom so it will literally just dump right into the washer and then bring it back down. It's empty, ready to go. You guys, I, we used to use like what, a bucket up here. Yeah. There's something, it just makes me so happy and it doesn't take up space because it's hanging on the door. Oh, I'm just saying so... you guys, if you need, and you know what? Depending I guess on how big your cabinets are, I was like, you could totally hang it on like the inside of a, cabinet but this is maybe a little big for that yeah I don't know. and you wouldn't want it like in your pantry you, you know yeah. near the, anyway well, i'm glad it said. brings you so much joy it really does amazon since i know this is really the only reason you guys will heal Rox says yep i'm the star of the show look at these look at these winkles he said hey i'm a handsome boy this is my favorite <laughs> So cute, so squishy. What a good boy, sweepy boy. Well, good evening. It is about dinner time, and tonight I am making chicken piccata. It is this Alton Brown Everyday Cook book, and this is one of my favorites. Again, it's one of those ones that I've made, I don't know, maybe not even a quarter of the recipes in here, but everything I've made is really, really good. And we've made this chicken piccata several times. So oh, I'll- This uh, recipe is wildly good. So good. So here, I'll zoom in. If you want to take a screenshot here, I'm not gonna, I might find, I might be able to find this recipe online. I'm not sure. But if not, here's the recipe. If you want to take a screenshot, so good. And then I also just threw some veggies in the oven. We got some potatoes and green beans, olive oil, salt and pepper, bada bing, bada boom. All right, there you have it. Chicken piccata potatoes and green beans and i definitely overcooked the green beans but it's all right they'll be delicious anyway performance of a lifetime coming up that's my joke jim <laughs> you should know that we've already filmed the first minute of this and we stopped and we're restarting so if you anyway. are new here a couple years ago we filmed this all the way through not once but twice and it was like 40 minutes like it was and we realized it wasn't filming either hours time. of our day didn't film either time i don't know if i've ever laughed so hard in my life after that well, i was We'll just link it. You go watch it. <laughs> You'll see why we were giggling other than the office. Nothing, but... nothing will ever top that, though. It's sort of like the drywall. Like, I can't read... I can't do a sequel to the drywall because nothing will ever live up to it. No, drywall this, part this... two, the deepening. <laughs> this will never live up to uh, that time. It was just... It was so funny. Yeah. All right. So, basically, if you... I mean, I feel like most of you guys probably watched yesterday's episode. Where, where we, we talked about, talk about, yeah. These are our favorite books in the year. So, we're not going to yeah. talk about all the books we read. Right, Tyler? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, me too. I, I had to narrow it down. Like, I... Anyway. So here's my You're thought, actually. <laughs> Watch, uh, yeah. Well, so here's my thought. Actually, I'm going to kind of do this. Because I'm going to go through the books that I'm not talking about as I go through. Because I'm read, I, I'm doing them in the order that I read them. These are not so you going to say everything you read? Yes, as I go through. Our goal is to keep it under three hours this year. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I, you know what? I don't I have, know why I care. I, have, I don't have to edit it. You do. Well, I have reasons. <laughs> I have reasons behind it because there's things that I'm going to explain later that I have to sort of say what I uh, the other That's things I read. Yeah, go ahead. You okay. <laughs> I have a twig in my eye. I don't know. I just suddenly felt like I had a twig in my eye. Uh, so anyway, all right. I'll explain as we go. But these are in order that I read them. These are not ranked, and I don't think yours are ranked either because it's too hard to rank. They're so different. Well, that's just it. Yeah. And also, I read a lot of um, <laughs> self help books. <laughs> You good? Yeah. <laughs> no, really, I'm good. And actually, they were really good, so I'm excited to share some of them because they were, like, mind-changing. And if you saw my 2022 Reflections video, we'll link below, <laughs> uh, I talk a lot about thing, things that have changed within me, <laughs> and I think a lot of it is in part to some of these books. So I want to sing Beauty and the Beast. That's what it was. I was so like, what badly, does that sound but like? I'm not going to. So um, sweet. And all no, this time, not that, not wait, that, the other one. It's changing change. me. Wait, what? No, no. <laughs> is that Jekyll and Hyde? I don't know, but the one what where it's like, it's been a change in me. What is that? That's oh, that's that the Broadway cut? version. Is that cut? Cut. <laughs> they cut that out of town. <laughs> I saw right. this show. All right. So I'll start. So hold on. How many favorites did you pick? I think fifteen, with a few caveats. So you read fifty. So that's about a third of your books. I, read, I picked I read, around. I read fifty-five. 
That's a lot. Speaking of Congratulations. which. Congratulations. That is quick, really quick a lot. Quick T.O. 3, 6, 9, 12, and oh, I'm counting. I really want to read that. Okay. Which one? That one. Mm. I've heard nothing but things about that. Uh, but the, uh, I'm reading 1984 right now because I, I haven't read it. I read it as a freshman in high school. I want a blankie. Keep talking. And I'm, I'm, I'm reading it now. You want I'm a like, blankie? No, I'm actually kind of hot. I should have changed it. Oh, I'm hot. I just want the comfort of the Shorts and the tank top. What was I saying? I'm oh, 1984. <laughs> I'm reading it, and I'm actually really liking it mm -hmm. because I can sort of draw parallels to current events, and I can draw things like based on life experience. But I'm like, why in the world would I have read this as a freshman in high school? And I look, and I'm like, no wonder so many people don't like to read because all the books that I've gone back and reread that I read in high school, like mm -hmm. as were, were my required reading, mm -hmm. I may enjoy as an adult, but as a kid as a like freshman sophomore in high school i'm like dude them, i would have sure. hated this no wonder i mean i was a, i was 25 before i started reading again yeah same and you know what that the first book i think of when i think about like books that i hated reading that made me not like reading the scarlet letter yeah. i bet if i read that now i would find it Love fascinating it. right but back then i'm like what it's, are we doing this was so i that was it's sort of like the piano teacher yeah, like i was like talking talk about, about yeah. like i'm like there's so I have a hundred books I would recommend to a freshman in high school over mm -hmm. over 1984. Not that it's a bad book; it's a very very good book. But right. Anyway, all right. So I'll start because I have more books. So I started the year off strong. Project Hail Mary. Uh, so I read The Martian, also by uh, Andy Weir, and I still th I really really like this book. And I'm not into science fiction, whatever. Uh, but these books I really really like. I like both of them. I still think I like The Martian more than this and the only reason why they're I mean, not connected though the stories aren't connected, they're not connected so, okay but the reason i like the martian more is because it seems a little bit more realistic all the everything in it still seems a little bit more realistic than this in this one there is an alien and i love the alien i love what they did there i feel like i'm if, you, if you're gonna uh, walk with me walk with me i know I'm not, I'm a, <laughs> all right i'll sit back i was like this is it'd be very uncomfortable for 30 minutes that way so i figured okay might as well uh, at some point, I'll just lay across your lap here. Uh, anyway, so that's why I like The Martian more, because I'm like, it seemed, even though it's, they're both far-fetched, but they're, but the the Martian seemed a lot more realistic to me. But I really like this book. Still highly recommend, especially if you did like The Martian. What if you have not read The Martian? Either? Then read The Martian first, because <laughs> I like that better. But that was last year. All right. Shall we just start strong with mine? I, that's the one that I was just pointing out. Right. I really want to read This that. book, I'm Glad My Mom Died, by Jeanette McCurdy. Okay. And again, we're not going to spoil anything in any of these. She, if you don't know, was in the Nickel Nick Nickelodeon show, the Nickelodeon show. <laughs> uh, called iCarly, which I, it was just beyond my time. Like I was already, I had already outgrown yeah. all that. You know what I mean? So I had never seen an episode. I have since looked back and watched clips just to see. So it doesn't matter if you've like never seen her in anything. I barely knew who she was. That book, it wouldn't matter if, if she was no one. That book is so so wildly interesting that's what you said i just I'm... i and i almost struggle to like find the words to describe because it's just fascinating the trajectory of her life and her relationship with her mom and it, it's obviously dramatized i'm glad my mom died she's not actually glad her mom died but when you hear the story it all makes sense it's a it is you should read that like early on january i, I might I, you, I, you'll read it in, like days knowing you well like i was saying i have a list of books that i already own i don't own that book the physical book um did I Libby that? I was going to say, I listened to the audiobook. Oh, no, I'm sure I can't. I highly saying, recommend the audiobook because she I, reads it. I like to own the physical book. But then I also listen to the audiobooks. Wait, or we Kindle. own this book. Mm -mm. Didn't you buy it? Mm -mm. All right, well, either way. But it, I might. I, it, might it might just so move up the good. list. Because, and the audiobook. And it's been on the, the New York Times bestseller list for like months now. I mean, it's, it's just, it's fascinating. And it's sad too. I mean, there's, yeah. but it's fascinating. I mean, just is she's okay now. So that makes me happy that, you know. It's just, anyway. you, I remember when you were reading that book, you just kept talking about how interesting I couldn't shut up about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's honestly... Make sure we're still filming. I, there are a lot of books yeah. I recommend that I'm going to talk about. That was like top two. <laughs> and I never would have guessed wow. it. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go through, and this is important in a few minutes. So, uh, then I read Animal Farm, Fever 1793, Happiest Baby on the Block, because at that point, Felicity yeah, was still Yeah, lots of, I was going to say, we born. read a lot of baby. Um, History of the World Map by Map, which was a big old uh, coffee table book. I'll talk about that. Brave New World, Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow, as in the... There's a That's musical. a long book. It was. 
made Mary Poppins, Crib Sheet, another book about child rearing. Highly recommend. Then if you're pregnant, or... we come to this. So there's there's a reason I'm telling you all the books that I read in between because I had to narrow it down to 15. But some of these will come back, and I'll explain later. Uh, so the next one that I'm going to bring up though is I Am Malala. Obviously, this book has been out for a long time, but I liked it so much more than I thought I was going to, and I got so much more out of it. Not even just the you know her story, but the story of you know where she's from and and the Middle East and that kind of stuff. And I I feel like I learned so much from this book outside of her own life story, but it's just about the backstory of everything that led up to it and all that. Culturally, I'm um, so it funny. was an amazing book. Highly recommend uh, everyone reads that book. But it was it was I knew I would like it, but it was far more captivating and interesting than I thought it was going to be. Um, they also have a, uh, she has a young adult version of it. She also has a uh, new book out, I'm pretty sure. Um, but anyway, I just, like I said, it's been out for a long time. It's been on my list, but I'm really glad that I finally read it. And I liked it more than I thought I would. Yeah, I need to read that one for sure. Let me talk about a novel I read. Uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of my, I was going to say favorite authors, but I've read a few stinkers. <laughs> <laughs> But this is one I read this year I really liked, which was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Very interesting. Taylor Jenkins Reid writes a lot of novels about famous people, but they're made up famous people. But boy, do they seem real. Yeah. And this person was literally married seven times and it was a celebrity. And so it goes through kind of what that was like. And I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact setting, but I want to say it was like the 40s, 50s type so it's just, it, it's just fascinating. And she does such a good job making the celebrities and the people, the other celebrities there with, like, all seem real. Like, the other one we read, Daisy Jones I was Six, just going to say, I thought so it was real. That was I the thought one. it was I know. real. And I literally would Google constantly. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's not real. Like, I keep, it's so, I highly recommend that book and uh, Seven Hus Husbands of Evelyn. Somebody was just talking about that. Who was the other person that was just talking about that that was like, have you read that? And you're like, yes, I have. I really liked it. it Might have been Jen. Is that who it was? Mm, Somebody I, else was just I talking about how much they liked that. I talked um, to a lot of people about books. All right, so then I read uh, The Metamorphosis. Then I read The Quiet American by Graham Greene. And this has been on my list for a long time. It's all about, uh, it's set in Vietnam. But the reason I bring it up is because of all the modern classics that I read this year, this is the only one I'm singling out. Because Animal Farm 1793, or Fever 1793, Brave New World, Mary Poppins, uh, the, Metamor the Metamorphosis, The Alchemist. Um, I've read a lot of sort of books that I'm like, I feel like I should read them at some point, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of book. They're on a this lot is of the only one that, list, yeah. yeah, this is the only one that I'm actually singling out because it was so beautifully written. Mm -hmm. um, and just the last year I read The Heart of Darkness and I, the it was just this beautiful flowery language, but I didn't actually enjoy it. This was a beautifully written book that I actually enjoyed the storyline and everything behind it. So of all the modern classics that I read this year, this is the one that I think everyone should read. It was just a, Well, I've never even heard of this. It was and a this beautiful is interesting. book. Interesting. I literally just randomly read a sentence about he was describing Moonlight and it was so pretty it's, and now it's I just, lost it's it. It's the most beautiful book. I, I might think, read this. One of the most beautiful books like I've soon. ever read. Would I like it? You know. Of all the ones that... Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think you would. Okay. I've read it's just, some of the ones it's just, you've And made, now it, it really stuff. it really made me want to go to Vietnam. Uh, anyway, beautiful. Cool. Beautiful book. Also, The Alchemist. If you, you didn't read it, right? Uh -uh. Okay. I read like six books this year that talked about how good The Alchemist was. And so my hopes were so high and it was fine. Were they so high you could just touch Because Malala talks about it. Will and Will, uh, Will Smith's book talk about it. Macklemore um, raps about it. There's the so many things that talk about The Alchemist. Mm -hmm. And so my, I had, my things were through the roof. And it was you like. You were just on the freaking moon. Anyway, it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> so don't, if you read it, don't get your hopes up. Don't think it's going to change your life. Because I thought it would change mine and it didn't. <laughs> and my life is just the same. <laughs> day in and day out. All right. Well, hey, on that note, the four hour work week you had previously read. Did you reread this year or no? Yeah. You did. This is the first time I read it and you've been telling me about it for like mm, forever. Well, I don't think this book is for everyone, and I can see where this book would really rub people the wrong way. But there are some ideas in it that are just really interesting. I don't even agree with everything he said. Yeah. Um, and so there were some parts I found myself kind of skimming quickly because yeah. I was like, eh. Okay. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot about like selling products and creating a website that A, some of it's outdated like big time, but B, it just doesn't apply to everyone. Yeah. It just doesn't apply. But 
just some really interesting things and things I've, I've kind of adjusted in my work life to make just to streamline. Yeah. Batching. I was just talking to the, to the agents about this. I was like, I feel like everyone who reads it would take away 20% from that book. But everyone, is gonna have, rule he but everyone about. is going to have a different 20% they're taking away. I read it a few yeah. years ago when I was very first starting my company and I took away a different 20% then that I took away this year when I read it when my company is now. What would you say you took away this time? I'm just genuinely curious. Removing myself from the equation Ooh. and letting my agents have the uh, authority to do what they need to do. Yeah, that's... That was a big thing I took away. Mine was just trimming the fat, baby. I but just, see, that's what I feel like, like I took I away. I just waste so much time doing things that really don't matter at yeah. the end of the day with my videos and stuff. That like it, that would take as much time as it would take me to film. I'd be working on something that I'm like, why am I doing this? This is taking... Yeah. So... Things that, you know, like, I, that's like I've always thought, I'm like, oh, I really need to start a TikTok or I really need to do this and that. And I'm like, but that's not where I feel like anything's going to happen for me, you know? Well, and if you have no interest as well, why? Uh, yeah. why? yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So anyway, interesting. Okay, so my next one. Um, so then, so I read The Alchemist, Notes from a Small Island by Bill Bryson, which I really did like, but we're going to get to another one. The next one I read uh, was Atomic Ooh. Habits. And this is the kind of book that I feel like every two to three years, I just need to pick up and read again because mm -hmm. it was such an inspiring book. And but I don't, so I read this too, and I, I it almost made my list. I loved reading it. And I was like, yeah, I'm highlighting like crazy. Yeah. I don't remember anything. But see, that's why I'm like, I feel like that's what, I was so inspired for a month or two. Yeah, that's why maybe like, that's I feel it. like I'll form those dendrites. Yes. The next time yeah. I read it, I'll learn more and I'll, I'll pick up more to remember more next I time. I do. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. Just that I think it's one of those books that every few years, it's sort of like four hour work week. I took, I took away so many things this time that I didn't take away last time. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember reading that. So one thing I was going to say that, there's there's just a lot of good in it. Like I could almost read it every year. Um, one thing that I feel like has affected me, and now I'm realizing it was from this, was the idea of like motivation and how it doesn't just happen. You have to create it. So like the environment you're setting yourself up. Like let's say you're trying to eat healthier. Well, it sounds simple, but little things like not having the sweets at eye level, like put them away or get rid of them, whatever. Those kinds of like little things can actually yeah. make big changes, you know, day to day, week to week. I don't remember if I read it in this or if it was something else, but there was something that I read that was profound for me and it said, inspiration is for amateurs. And basically it just said to me that, you know, everyone, you know, everyone has sort of has that idea of like, you know, staring out the window, waiting for the great American novel to come to your head. But that's, that's not how actual, on. we're all waiting on that. Great that's American. not how actual creativity works. You know, I feel like when I sit down to like edit a video or write a song or something like that, mm -hmm. once I actually start tinkering and messing with something, that's when I get the inspiration. Like the, this is stupid. This is a very bad example, but like the coffee thing, I just pour, I just had a, a, a clip of me pouring coffee. And then as I was editing that, it made me think of like, wouldn't it be kind of funny if I actually like had taken this clip and like slowed it down and put like, Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, Y'all remember I when would, he did that earlier in Vlogmas? I never. I think some people missed it. I never would have thought of that had I not just been actually doing the work and editing. That's when I come up, with, and I feel like it's that's a stupid example. But like when no, I, I do like travel videos and stuff like that, like I'll think about it like, oh, what am I gonna do? But once I actually sit down and actually start the work, that's when, it, that's when the inspiration comes. It's not the other way around. Yeah, I would agree with that. Go ahead and do another because I was I also read that and you have more than me, so like we agree now. Next, okay. Uh, so I did. It's all relative by AJ Jacobs. I love everything that A.J. Jacobs writes. Uh, that was not my favorite of his. If you're picking one, I still think The Know-It-All is my favorite. But anyway, I love that. Uh, Will by Will Smith. That was pretty interesting. Um, we did but... listen to the audiobook of that. And side note, we were listening to it. And we're, had we just finished or we were still? No, we were we still were finishing just, it. Yeah. When the slap heard around the world happened. Yeah. And we still had like 20% left. And we were like... <laughs> it's funny I don't because... even know how I feel about any of it. But anyway, but it was weird like... He talks a lot about like his dad and their relationship and like yeah it was interesting it was just kind of wild that I we were in the middle of it i would have a very different view of that book had that not happened while we were reading it because yeah, i feel like it, tainted it colored it. so much for me um and i remember i even told you you kind of like i felt like i was side eyeing half the yeah stuff well and like, when the when the book first came out i told jessica i was like i am so excited will smith is coming out with the book i feel like he's a person who has a lot to say and he did. It was a good, did, it was an interesting book. But it's just so tainted in my mind now. Thanks. Anyway. Thanks, Will. No, I, okay, I feel like I don't want to offend anyone because obviously I get why. Yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to, anyway, we got a lot yeah, to talk about. Yeah. Okay. All About Me by Mel Brooks. I loved this book because I love Mel Brooks. And it was so interesting hearing about all these things behind the scenes of all these, all the movies that he wrote. There's so many things that 
uh, I sort of took for granted about, you know, the because I've Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles and all those are such amazing movies. The producers. The producers. There's just so many amazing Six old Six. school Hollywood stories in that book. Um, and then he talked a lot about uh, the producers on Broadway, which one of my was one of my favorite shows. Oh, on Broadway? Uh, like with yeah. Sutton Foster? Um, but he was amazing. Wait. This man could do everything. Sutton Foster? Who am I talking about? Uh, yeah, Sutton Foster. Wait, was Sutton no, Foster? that was Young uh, Frankenstein on Broadway. Ignore. That's right. Um, but anyway, he was... Um, it was so fascinating, and he, there's nothing this man can do. I mean, he would literally just be like, yeah, I could do that, and he would do it. And I, the perfect example is he, like, uh, uh, The Inquisition, I think it was. In, or no, it wasn't that. It was, um, oh, <laughs> it was Springtime for Hitler and the producers. He was trying to find somebody to write the song, and he couldn't find somebody to write it. And so his wife was like, well, why don't you just write it? And so never written a song before in his life, went into his room, and he, the joke was that he was like, you know, my wife said... You can go in there for an hour and then you'll come out with it. And so three months and an hour later, I came out with a song. Anyway, uh, it was hilarious. It was heartfelt. It was so fascinating. And like, he wrote a musical and he can't even play piano or anything. That just, is wild to he me. He would just come out. That. It was amazing. He's an, he's just absolutely amazing. And I love that book. All right. Let's talk about these two books. Um, it Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover and It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. Those are both literally number one and number two right now on the New York Times bestseller okay. list on the fiction So list. here's the thing. They're, it's interesting. I mean, I read both of these very quickly. For Especially for me, I feel like it takes me a while because I only read it at night and I fall asleep. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> How dare I fall asleep? Uh, it Ends With Us. It They're just interesting. It's about a relationship and stuff that goes down and... Then the second book is about the, kind of the, not the fallout, but like a little bit fast forwarded in time. And it, it was a nice way to end that story because the way that the first the book second ends. second book you mean was so, the way to end up the. Yeah. Okay. The second book wraps up the story, which makes sense in theory. But if you read the reasoning behind the author, why she wrote it, she wasn't planning on it. She was like, that was the story. It ends with us. And she was kind of vehement, vehemently against oh. writing a second story, second book. But she decided to, because she was like, you know what? Th this character deserves the ending that everyone wanted for her. When you read it, it'll make sense. And I remember feeling at the end of it, it ends with us being like, ah, oh, like, yes, but also, Oh, like, huh. so it was really nice to read the second book. I kind of dragged my feet for a second. And then I was like, ah, I'm just going to read it. And yeah. I was really glad I did. Huh. It was nice. It's a good two story arc. I do hope she doesn't write any more of that. I mean, yeah. I hope she writes more. I hope she doesn't write any more for the story because I really do feel like it was really good. They could do yeah. a movie out of it and it'd be really good. And hmm. yeah, I don't know if you like it. I mean, it's not really your style. Yeah. But it's good. You, you want a know. good read that you'd be like into, do both of those in order. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then I read The Answer Is by Alex Trebek, which was actually pretty fascinating. Uh, and it, he wrote it right before he passed away. And so that was interesting. The Guilty by James Patterson, which is an audiobook that we listened to on our road trip. Yeah. It's an audible original. So it was it literally is. written to be an audiobook. The book, a bunch it of was, actors. Yeah, it was fine. It was kind of garbage. Like it didn't the story, matter. Yeah. John Lithgow is amazing though. And I will take that to I it was fun to listen to though like if you want one i think i like the idea of the audible uh, audible originals yeah because they've got all these different actors doing the voices so it's fun it was like most it was actors a pretty we know. huge cast yeah. yeah and it was like for a road trip yeah it was interesting john you know? is freaking amazing though. he can do Gosh. anything i'm not gonna talk about any of the books that i talked about for the uh agency um uh book club so those are not even going to be in the on the list here um so the next one that i did here was the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And I like this way more than I thought I was going to. This was one that you recommended. That was like top three of last year. I think about this book a weird amount. Like, I just... There's something about it. it you was... know what, though? People either absolutely love this book or really don't like it. And I'm yeah. realizing that more and more. But then there's... Let me do a little side note and then we can keep talking about this. Yeah. Cloud Cuckoo Land. So many people love. I don't get it. I, I mean, I read That's the book. I list. get it. Yeah. You might like it. I already bought it. But it's so. one of those, I think, like this, where people are either like, that's the best book I've ever read, like, all time, or they're like, I like I rated it three huh. stars. I literally got to the end, and I was like, I love the idea of the story and the way it's weaved together. I think it was beautiful. Yeah. I just don't think the story was told very well. Really? I just, this I one? was really, no, 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 no. Oh, Club, 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 oh, Club. okay. So, that one I read this year, I just didn't love. But certain people, like, that is their number one book of this year, and they didn't like that one. 
I mean, they're very different books, but I, yeah. it's just on my mind. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, but yeah, I, I thought this was way more fascinating than I thought it was going to be. And maybe that's it. I went in with very low expectations, but I really Dude. did like this book. It was all about, but I mean, think about it. It was all about travel and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there was all these cool places that she went, and then it was all about, you know, history and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I loved it. It's one of my favorite novels I read this year. That is, that's a top tier novel for me. I would yeah. reread that. All right, let's go into one of, this is probably, like, what was the other one I had? I'm glad my mom died. This one's up there, like, top two or three this year. Maybe you should talk to someone by Lori Gottlieb. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, this made me want to become a therapist or psychologist, like, really, truly. And I think if I were to, like, go back to school, I think that's what I'd do. Yeah. Take forever, and I'd be like super old when I start but people would think I have gravitas so it's yeah, okay it makes a but anyway um I do think so too if you want somebody that has some life experience you know it is just it's a therapist telling about her own life and she also goes to a therapist and so you you would love this book oh I know it's on my list yeah um but she also talks about her clients and obviously she shouldn't give their real names but and their stories and how they've come around and it is absolutely so, such a good book like it is so that might be my favorite book of the year the more I'm talking about I remember so much about that book whereas other ones I just finished I'm like I already forgot that one I remember so much about it was so so good highly recommend to yeah, no, that's I highly on my list. recommend it to anyone that, anyone I think anyone the, would like that it that and then the uh, I'm glad my mom died those are both high on my list that I might buy them and put them up on my mm. list because you've talked so highly about They're both so of them good. Uh, okay, so then how and do we... I didn't steer you wrong with... No, no, I mean, everyone that you've room. recommended... Because you read a lot and you're like, you won't like that. So, but the one... I think you know me well enough that, you know, the ones that... Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. So, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, classic. Medium Raw by Anthony Bourdain, which I'll get to another one of his. Tools of Titans by Timothy Ferris, uh, which is the same, same guy dude. who wrote 4-Hour Workweek. Mm -hmm. um, so, my next one that I'm going to talk about, though, is Live from New York, which was a little bit dry... Unless you know all the people. So I love Saturday Night Live. And so literally everyone in this is, if you go back all the way to the 70s and stuff like that, they're all people that you would know if you'd watched the show for a very long time. Or if you've, I mean, mm -hmm. really, it's amazing how much this show has influenced pop culture. Not even just from the show itself, but then from everyone who's ever been on the show going on and doing a million other things. Um, so it was really long, and it was a little bit on the dry side, unless you really find all this stuff fascinating. So I wouldn't recommend this to everybody, but if you like Saturday Night Live and you like all the people, I mean, everyone who's ever been in it. Like 70s, 80s, 90s. And, and it goes chronologically and talks. It's literally all interviews with everybody who's ever been on it. And it, it, they did a really good job of putting it in an order that makes chronological sense. Um, but well, It uh, should make chronological sense. Right? Well, what I'm saying the way that they... It, yeah, but gotcha. they... Uh, uh, the story's all kind of flow well into another it's not just random snippets of interviews and stuff like that see i um, would be interested to pick up like where i know the people and just read it from then on because yeah. we started listening to this as an audiobook together and i literally what we listened to like 45 minutes and i was like i cannot do this it's yeah. so dry and it was it was like the, uh, 70s i just didn't know anything about any of from this. yeah because i mean it, it's yeah so it's really really interesting there was a, a dry spell which is funny because the show kind of went through a dry spell well several dry spells but anyway <laughs> overall it was a very fascinating book if you find saturday night live fascinating let's talk about lucy oh my gosh that's love a lucy too. by lucille ball we listened to this and lucy's daughter there we go so good so good so good. I can't believe how good this book And so was. many people, after I mentioned it in some video a month or so ago, a couple months, a lot of people, a lot of you guys have read it and you loved it too. I don't know that much about Lucy. Like, I, I've i seen enough episodes, but it's not like I have this deep love for her. And oh my gosh, it was fascinating. Yeah. I wish my parents would read this because I had been know on, they would love it. Yeah. It had been on my list for a very long time and I just kind of randomly like, you know what? I really want to read it now. And I, I am so glad I did because it's so, her life story is so fascinating. And... <sighs> It really is. It was just, it was, it was so Ooh, good. there's, wait, did I look at the pictures in here? I'm trying to remember. Anyway, oh, well, I'm going to be doing that tonight. Can I just stick it over? Yeah, so <laughs> um, good. So good, yeah. Highly, re highly recommend. And the audiobook was good, too. Yes, yeah, because her daughter reads it, and she can, she can she, do her voice. And she does her dad's voice, Desi Arnaz's voice. So well. So well. So well. Like, I guess it is her dad, it makes sense, but it was still, like, freaky. I'm like, wow, that was yeah, dead on. yeah. Uh, okay, so I read three Bill Bryson books this year. Uh, this is my favorite one, A Walk in the Woods. This is probably his most famous one, uh, I would say. 
Um, but I've read a lot of travel literature, and he's just his, he's hysterical. And everyone for years are they was funny like, books? they are very funny. Oh, but everyone for years was like, you really need to read Bill Bryson. What does he look like? And so finally, yeah, I started <laughs> getting into him this year, and I have I think four or five others that I've already bought that are on my you know list to read this year. Uh, but of of the three that I read this year, this was my favorite. It's more you like it. It's more favorite than uh, the Christmas one. This one, there's very very I different know. books. I'm joking. That was just an interesting book, but it's not like it's. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can just hear his voice that drives me nuts when seeing that picture of him. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what he looks like. That sounds exactly right. I can't explain it other than that. Um, okay, let's talk about this one, Crying in H Mart. It was really popular, I want to say, like, a year ago. Like, it's, it yeah. said it won the Goodreads Choice of 2021 or something like that. It's a memoir, and it is... It was... I, I kind of read it on a whim because it was available at the library and I was like, it was on my list. I've heard good things. It's so good. It's about this woman who like her mom is dying and basically how, what that looked like that last, let's say year. And it would go back in time to like when her mom, you know, decades prior and it would kind of flip flop, but it flowed so easily. It was so easy to follow. And it was just fascinating. There were parts that were funny, but also it was just, and it's a different culture too. So it's, it was just really good. Do you think I'd like it? I think you would because you'd like the cultural part of it too to just learn about. Yeah, that's my list. I think you, yeah. I think you would, especially since you don't read a lot of, I mean, I was going to say a novel. It is a memoir. It's a true story. I think, I think you would like it. Yeah. Out of the novels I read, you'd like it. You'd read it in three days. Okay. It's a quick, it's a quick read. Well, you. speaking, I think this is on your list too. I think I saw. Yeah. It yeah. Is. So going there. By Katie Couric. Again, I rated this five stars. I think you did three. I think I did. I think I did four. Four. If I didn't do four, I, I, I still think about it. This was one of those books that we, we both read this year. And I swear, every time we talked about it, we were like, man, that was fascinating. Like, everything about her life was. I, I mean, just didn't know anything about her. I her knew personal was life was fascinating, but then, of course, she was the host of the Today Show, so she has a lot of, you know, celebrity run ins and that kind of stuff. And that was She also goes into the Matt Lauer thing, which is, of course, interesting i and just i fell in fun. love with this book i really really it was this. good and again we listened to her read it yeah and that was because there's some dark stuff she's gone through that i had no idea i'm like man like yeah. she could not catch a break so yeah that was top tier i think most people would really like that book fascinating book all right so i'm gonna blast through a few here because i have a few more um so uh again those were all on the people mover travel list uh dad is fat by jim gaffigan that was kind of funny um, I read The Wizard of Oz, the original one. It was fine. I read Wicked, like the, the, the book Wicked. Uh, it was fine. Darkly Dreaming Dexter. Um, wait, I missed one in there. There it is. Okay. So I read Robin, which has also been on my list for a while. And this was... I feel like I've read a lot of celebrity biographies this year. Um, the year of biographies. This has been on my list for a long time, too. It was just... Did you feel I, sad reading it? No. But it was, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, you can't watch, I can't erase. You, you can't watch Bourdain now. Like, there's a lot of things that you can't watch now, whatever, because, so anyway, it, it was, me sad. it was, I don't even know how else to explain this book. I mean, I'm not, I've said nothing about it so far. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And he talked a lot about, you know, the different movies that he made over the years and that kind of stuff. But he talked about his personal life. Um, and it was pretty interesting to me how, um, really, I mean, he was sort of that, that perfect tortured artist, you know? Um, that he was, he had this wit, he had this, you know, this such fast paced, you know, comic it's timing. Talent, you know, yeah. But then it's interesting too, because so much of the stuff that I watched and found so interesting, he, I realized after reading this book, he did time and time again. So all these things that I thought that I, you know, I would see him on the actor studio or I'd see him on this, that, and the other. And when I was reading this, I'm like, oh, he did that for years. Like that was part of his bit that he did for years. And I, uh, I, one of my would it be like favorite. specific things he would say or whatever? Yeah, exactly. And so, Interesting. um, things that I maybe didn't realize, like he did this, uh, Life from the Met, I think. And the same jokes he did in the 80s, he did in the 2000s with, with Robin Williams, Robin Williams Live on Broadway, which is one of my all time favorite stand ups. I watched that so much, but then I rewatched his Live at the Met. I'm like, well, that's the same jokes he told oh. in 2003. Hmm. So, anyway, it was, it was just interesting. And he was, I don't know, it was, 
it it, it really painted him in a lot different picture than what I had in my head before. Do you look at him more highly or less highly now after having Just differently. Just totally differently. differently. So, I don't know. I'm glad that I read it. They always say, don't, don't... meet your heroes. Yeah. Um, do you wanna, why don't you do another? Because I only have a couple more. Alright, I'll do one more here. Um, so, this, I've read every Anthony Bourdain book. Not his fiction books. He wrote three or four fiction books. I've read oh. all of them. This is my favorite one that I've read. It was the last one that I read. It's called A Cook's Tour. It is my favorite Bourdain book. If you like Bourdain, you're going to love this. If you don't like Bourdain, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. That's, it is great. It was the most travelly of his books. Because a lot of them, he talks a lot about food. And I love food, but not, I mean, I've, you know, I've read all his books. But this was more about travel than it was about food. And I loved it. I loved every minute That's of it. That's good to know. If I ever were to read one, that'd That's, be the one. Yeah, yeah. It's like how the Travel Channel only does uh, shows about food and the Food Network only does yeah. shows about ghosts. Or wait, I'm just okay, no, that The out. Travel Channel get... now only does shows about ghosts. <laughs> they are just, they have, they've lost their way. <laughs> and I love, and that's what I'm like. It really is just ghost shows. It really, really, truly is. Even <laughs> if you get on there. called the Travel Network anymore? It should be the Supernatural Network and we have another channel ghost called the Travel Channel. Ghost Network. <laughs> anyway, that's a different story for a different day. The, uh, <laughs> so I was funny. just watching somebody feed Phil. In his newest season, he was talking about on his episode about Texas. Oh yeah, he said <laughs> something about how he went to uh, he went to the Travel Channel trying to pitch this show, and the Travel Channel says, "Well, we're trying to get away from travel." So they went to the Food Network, and the Food Network was like, "Well, we're trying to get away from uh, food." <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of you. You look at the channels, and that's exactly what you see. So that just made me laugh. Nobody knows what uh, they are anymore. But uh, yeah, and I'm anyway. We could talk about that for a lot, but yeah. I'm not going to right now. So this is one I read towards the beginning of the year, and I almost didn't include, but I'm gonna because I, I'm starting to realize I can judge a book. I Cloud Cuckoo Land, you guys. I had to look up what it was about. I genuinely was sitting upstairs feeding Felicity in the dark, you know, rocking her, and I'm like, what was Cloud Cuckoo Land even about? I had to look like it after, up. After you mean just now? Just now. <laughs> I had to look it up, and I'm like, oh yeah yeah yeah. Whereas like this book I read a million years ago, it feels like, and I remember most of it. So this was called The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. Slow start, stick with it because I promise it's worth it. It is about the Dust Bowl, which I knew nothing about. It is about, like, the ending is interesting. Like, it was a good, good book. It would make a great movie. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember you talking about that. Um, I don't think I told you much about it because I couldn't decide towards the end of it. I was like, I think you'd like it, but I'm not sure. But now that I think about it, I'm like, I think I really liked this book. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you ever have a book like that that oh, you yeah. almost have to digest 100%. for a while? Not, so I've digested are... it and I've decided. Yeah, like it was good. months later, I'll decide. I'm like, I, I can't stop thinking about that book. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. That's the four yeah. wins. But yeah, about the Dust Bowl and about um, people being displaced because they literally could not grow food. Like they couldn't survive. So they'd move and then they'd be in these, like, basically just absolutely homeless and what that was like and. Just what the culture was like during that time was cra out there. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. know anything about any of that. Now I do. I remember reading... Was, uh, actually, you would like it because there is that histor it's a yeah. historical fiction, obviously. You would like it because you'd be learning about a, something that I don't think either of us really know much about. Yeah. I remember reading Out of the Dust uh, in like fourth or fifth grade yeah. or something like that. Similar vibe. Read, it's yeah. like the grown-up Out of the Dust. So uh, the next one is eleven twenty two sixty three. I read this in... Uh, this is the third Stephen King novel that I've read. I still think I like The Stand, while the first 95% of The Stand is still my favorite Stephen King book. Uh, but this, I also really, really liked. But if I'm picking one to like introduce people to Stephen King, I would still recommend The Stand. I also read It. That book is crazy. Uh, but this one, I still really, really liked. But again, I think my hope's really high because my best friend Ben was like, it's his favorite Stephen King novel. So again, I gotta... This is my one piece... If you take nothing away from this... <laughs> Don't ever, 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 ever read Goodreads reviews oh. of a book, ever. Not before you read the book to get an idea of what it's about, not after, because Goodreads reviews are the absolute worst. They're either like wildly mean about the book, like this was absolute it's trash. It's the worst book I've ever read like in my life. Well written book, you know, yeah. a terrible writing. This or, author, so he doesn't know anything about yeah. it. It's oh, and they'll awful. get detail. Awful. Or it'll be like, best book I've ever read. And then you read it and you're like, what? So yeah. don't do just it. don't read it. Don't just do make it. your own. But also that would, the other piece of advice would be, we shouldn't recommend things to anyone ever. Because if it comes highly recommended, our hope will be <laughs> <laughs> so, 
This so don't true. take any of our recommendations. Don't You're read a be single one of these books. Anyway, but yeah, so I, don't get me wrong. I really, really like this book, but again, I had really high hopes because Ben has read, I'm pretty sure, every Stephen King book, and this is his favorite one. Too many books. But I really do like it, so don't get me wrong. And I love, I, okay, this, I don't love the JFK assassination. I am fascinated by the JFK assassination. Um, and I've gone down so, so many awesome. rabbit holes on that. Uh, anyway. I think a lot of people have. It's At some point in your life, it's like, yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have like one left, so. All right, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go fast. Um, Half the States Got Their Shapes. Loved it. It was very interesting. Uh, the Man Who Died Twice. Loved these books. Loved the first one. Loved the second one. Can't wait to read the third one. Um, I wasn't going to Is it going to be one. The Man Who Died Thrice is the next one? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I wasn't going to include this one, but I wanted to just quickly say, so I read Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. The only other one I've read of his was Talking to Strangers, which I hated at first because I did not think it was about what it was about. When I read it, I was like, Talking to Strangers. It's like, oh, it's going to be like <laughs> advice how to on to... how to talk to strangers. And I think, read you know, it. Uh, no, that's not at all what it's about. But it was one of those books that I couldn't stop thinking about. Hmm. And so... Well, they're kind of like self-help, right? Or like... A, not really. He just does deep... It's nonfiction, I should say. It's deep dives into research on things that you don't think you care about until after you read it. And you're like, well, that was fascinating. Okay. But I've only read two of them. That's what I mean. Like, I guess self-help's not the right... It's nonfiction, not a novel or anything like Correct. that. Correct. It's... Yeah. But it's... It, he goes and... I've heard know, a lot of his books are good. He connects really things well. that are completely separate in my mind. And then he'll connect them in a, in a very specific way. And it's pretty interesting after <laughs> the fact. But again, it's always stuff that I'm like, I think about it all the time. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Um, this one we both read. Okay, so then we'll go past those. I talked about those. Um, okay, so Sarah Bareilles. I just love her. She can do no wrong. Love this book. Oh, Loved everything about it. She's just so She's talented. perfect. She's perfection. She, she can do no wrong. We listened to the audiobook. You'd fly through it. If you like Sarah so Bareilles, you'd, you'd be interested in it if you don't. You She's know, just, I like just. That. I just love her. She's so freaking good. She's it's the ridiculous. best. Um, okay, Made by Stephanie Land. Um, we both read. Yeah cried numerous times there were parts of it that were just hard for me to get through we need to um, watch the netflix show yes i know we still have not seen it um and it's just i mean a window into a world where and it's a true story right it's a memoir yeah um about this woman that you know she leaves her husband and with her kid basically goes to become a maid to be able to make ends meet and just about their life and their living situation and it sounds like okay it is so sad but interesting and the ending is is what it is i don't want to say good or bad because yeah. it would give away things but i found it a, a really good read yeah i i we really do need to watch that because i know we'll I like know. the um, i know the parts of it were hard to get through yeah yeah also i'm pretty Especially sure i was parent, super pregnant yeah. when i was reading it or postpartum and i like cried a lot i'm like why yeah. am i reading this right now yeah um all right quickly uh steve jobs this was <laughs> so much again it's been out for a very long time, like 10 years. It is so much more interesting than I thought it was going to be. It was, he was so temperamental. You were telling me just recently, though. Like well, Steven... his, I was going to say, I don't know, but his daughter wrote a book called Small yeah. Fry, and it's, it sounds like it paints him not in a very great well, but light as a parent. This was, I haven't read this it. was perfectly written. Walter Isaacson did the perfect job of writing this book because he, he just ran it right down the middle of showing that he was this sort of temperamental, like just terrible person in a lot of ways, but he really was this truly next level creative genius. And mm -hmm. he does the perfect job, I think, of of walking right down the middle of the line with like just how... giving the, giving it straight. Yes. So then you make your own judgment. Exactly. But I think he said it at, at the end of the book. He wrote like a ten year uh, update, and he said it perfectly. Something about how humans are not black and white and geniuses even more so so That's it's so it's so and basically all the things that made him a terrible person also kind of in turn made him who he was and made him you know we wouldn't all have iphones in our pockets we wouldn't all have ipads we wouldn't all have these things if he weren't that person you know so it's Good it's bad i guess if you're gonna read this is i mean this is the biography to read about steve jobs it was perfectly written because I, it was an amazing biography um and then i have one more yeah, no, I'm good. You good? You done? Mm -hmm. I'm finishing one still, I mentioned yesterday, called How to Do the Work. It's a self-help book. Very interesting. Um, but I, I'm not done with it yet, so I don't totally feel comfortable talking. I mean, <laughs> but it is interesting. Yeah. I still think I like, uh, well, they're just different. Anyway, so yeah, your yeah. turn. Go so this it. is the last one. You finished so, it, wasn't it last night? 
uh, last night, yep. And I was trying to finish it by the end of the year, and I did. Um, so this is my the most recent coffee table book that I've read, but this is the most beautiful book. You bought it for me for my birthday, something, I think? I think so. So The Thousand Places to See Before You Die by Patricia Schultz, which, by the way, we had the opportunity to meet her, and we didn't, and I'm so mad. I didn't know who it was. She was sitting there at a table, and, and anyway, it doesn't matter. Um... <laughs> We were at a travel excited. convention, to make this clear. Yeah. It wasn't like at a And she was sitting there, and I didn't realize who she was at the time, and now I'm like, oh my gosh, she was sitting right there. Anyway, this has been out for a very long time. So did she go around and take all these pics herself? No, she like... doesn't take the pictures, but she does. She even says at the beginning, she's basically a one-woman show. She writes all the copy. She does everything. She decides what's in the list and what's not. Um, but there is a, uh, a list of photo credits. Um, but she... How long? Uh, this book has been out forever, and I've had the, the paper book of it, um, or the, the non-picture version, but it's so beautiful. This is the most armchair traveler book. I just, I <laughs> loved this book. Every bit about it. It's just, it's beautiful. And I just, every night I would read 10, 15 pages, and it just, it was just Every incredible. night you'd pretty much be like, huh, look at this, and show me something. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's just beautiful. So for the armchair traveler in your life, highly highly recommend that's cool it made me want to travel everywhere all the time always also <laughs> um, and then i have one honorable mention if you're a big walt disney world fan this is the other book that i read before i read this one um i really did like this book the only thing i did not like about this book is if you're a disney fan you already know everything in this book that like, was my next question like should i read it if you're a disney person there's nothing i mean the pictures are cool i mean but there's nothing like you already if you're if you're a Walt Disney World fan. Well, but maybe you just like reading. Yeah, and that's the, if that's know. the case, but it's also you know, Ugh. yeah, I know. Um, but I don't know. There was nothing in this book that was profound or changed. You know, my view of certain things or you know, learn more about the history or anything like that. It's pretty surface level. It's pretty uh, marketing material kind of stuff. I mean, it's that's cool though. It's cool. I mean, I'm glad I had. I'm glad I read it. But oh, uh, when I'm missing Disney, this would be a good. You know what yeah. I mean? It definitely, based on the pictures. Yeah. And that's it. We did it. And I didn't fall asleep. I'm impressed by that. I'm so close. <laughs> I hope, if, if anyone counted the amount of yawns, I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I will sleep like a baby tomorrow night because I still have to get up early and edit this tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, too early. But, 31, um, 31 videos. Yeah. We did it. In a row. Day by day. Every day. I can't believe we did it. And if you guys aren't tired of us enough yet, January 3rd, I have another video, another series of videos from our October Walt Disney World Disney Cruise trip. There's like 12 videos coming out starting on January 3rd. That was one of my favorite trips we've ever taken. I, I cannot wait to watch these It vlogs. was so fun. I can't was, wait. Yeah, so. Because it was with our best friends on the cruise. Yep. And then it was with your mom and brother. Yep. In Disney World, and of course the girls and us yeah. too. And it was one of my favorite trips. Yeah. It was so much fun. So, so you I'm excited. You don't to even have us. any time to get tired of or to, to, to miss us because we're coming <laughs> right up. And obviously you have vlogs on your channel and, and uh, videos oh, on your yeah. channel three times a week. So twice a week, sir. Twice a week. My apologies. <laughs> uh, but I, like I was saying in yesterday's video, I've got a lot more videos coming out this year because mm -hmm. just the way that I've got everything structured now, it's going to be a lot more time to do cooking videos and to stretch your YouTube muscles. I've got pretty big. <laughs> I've been stretching them for years. <laughs> you know what I realized? My Jammy Awards are, are coming up, by the way. I've already filmed two of the three videos. Yeah. Those videos I started in 2013, the year wow. I started my channel, which means I've been doing them for near, I'd say nine years because it's at the end of the year, you know. And what's crazy is I called them the Jammy Awards in 2013. You knew. Every time. I knew, man. Wow. And I'm not even jam anymore. I'm not even Jessica Ann. Yeah, a lot of people are like, you call it jabbies. Like, no, I got to keep doing, yeah. it's got to be jammies. Why not? As is tradition. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty awesome that you get it kind of, you know, it's a callback. I know. Yeah. Um, Somebody, by the way, sent me a message the other day and they said they were watching old video of, videos of ours and they found... It was a vlogs giving video, mm -hmm. which apparently you did at some point. That sounds familiar. Would have been a long time. It was when we very first got the cutting board. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about. Oh, how we just baby different. cutting board! I wonder yeah. what it looked like. <laughs> Probably a lot cleaner than it is now. I don't know. You take really good care of it. You do all the oilings and the. I try to, man. 
Just it's a good cutting board. And that was an expensive one, but we got a good deal on it, like TJ yeah, Maxx. A lot something. of people ask where we got it. TJ Maxx, man. We got but it, it was a booze block, which are can get really expensive. And there's a million kinds and sizes, but yeah. they're all like that nice, thick. Um, and then booze, that brand, booze block brand sells. Yeah. <laughs> um, sells like the stuff, like yeah. the wax you put on it. And so you know. But um, yeah, look out at TJ Maxx and Marshalls. I feel like I still see them there all the time. Yeah. Yep. So don't pay full price. Go to one of those kinds of stores. But, but yeah, I've got, and I, I have a few other exciting things that are in the works as far as like cooking videos and stuff like that. There's a new, there's new things coming out. I'm very excited. No, I'm excited. Listen to my voice. It's so, I know. It's I, this done, is man. 31 days of. It's done. Now you're just making it lower. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. Anything else to say? I know. This is like the last chance. I feel like there's there's some other things I was going to say. I don't remember though. But uh, yeah. I'm looking was... forward to, like, we've got a Disney trip coming up, your mm -hmm. convention and all that. And we are vlogging that, so there's going to be yes. some vlogs. I don't know how many, but some vlogs from that. Yes. But I'm looking forward to, after that, I'm very much looking forward to that trip. But after that, having like some normalcy again with like yeah. having help with the kids and being able to work and like I am planning on still doing the bathroom. Get our head above water. I will vlog about the bathroom. I Renovating am still planning this on this one. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think you finally decided what you wanted, right? No. No. Oh, okay. Well, I, I have I no idea what I want. No, I have six ideas of what I want. Oh, I thought <laughs> we'd finally decide. decided. Okay. Well, we have on like the wainscoting or whatever. Yeah, we know that. It's the color whether we do like the sage green. I thought that's what we were with doing. With matte black. Yeah, that's what I want. And wood. Yeah. And the white. Yep. And then, and then, <laughs> character, main character. Thank you. Appreciate for the experience. <laughs> anyway, the experience. um, and then uh, people were asking about putting the the stuff on the bookshelves down in the basement. I will do. Oh, when the baby. basement is completely done, we'll uh, we'll do a. We'll have to do a video tour. Yeah. That could be its own video, just showing. Might like, also okay, be on. It's done. He's, Brady uh, might have some on his channel too because Brady's doing his. So if you this was yesterday's Brady's video now, workshop in Delhi, check out his YouTube channel. How out. cool that we can say that now. I know, but he's gonna have a ton of videos about our basement and stuff like that. So if you're interested in more about that, he could talk. about Side it. note: So many of you guys went over and subscribed to his channel and watched his intro video, and I think that's so cool. That's it made awesome. me smile so hard. Because it's just, it's exciting. I know, it really a is. A new and YouTube baby was born. He's going to do such a good job. I just, he already I'm is, so yeah. excited about his videos. All right, well, Vlogmas is over, guys. We love you. We really do. Thanks for sticking with us this whole time. I just still can't believe it actually does feel like this month has kind of flown by. In some ways. But then I look back at the footage and I'm like, gosh, that was this month. I was like, so like three young years back then. So, so look, young. Like looking at a president at the beginning of his term and the end of his term. Oh, day. just The eight down years have gone ragged. by and he looks 40 I feel years ragged. older. <laughs> it's so true. All, All right. right. Well, see you later. Bye, guys. We love you. Thanks for watching. <laughs>